Hi, I'm Stuart Lynch, and this is another in my video series for developers who are in between the beginning stage and landing their first job, or just people like me who are independent learners who want to develop their Swift skills just because. This is part two of a two-part series on choosing between global variables or functions, utility or service classes, or type extensions. If you haven't already seen the first video in this series, I'll leave a link to it in the notes below. In this video, I'll focus on functions that can be shared throughout your project, or indeed, can be copied into a variety of different projects. If you're interested in seeing how these three things work together, and morph from one to another, then keep watching. In this first example, I'm going to use a Swift Playground. In the Playground, I have a demo file that is simply declaring two constants, one for Celsius and another for Fahrenheit. What I want to be able to do is to create functions that will do the conversion from one to the other, one for Celsius to Fahrenheit and the other for the other way around. As with the last video in this two-part series, I'm going to start with a global space and create my two functions in a file. I've set up a file in the sources folder for this purpose. To save some time, let me just paste these two functions into the file. With the first file, it accepts an integer which is a Celsius temperature, converts it to another integer that is the corresponding Fahrenheit value. In the second, we do the reverse. In each case, I convert the integer to a double to get an accurate calculation, then round it off back to an integer, and then return the value. But that's not the point of this video. If I return to my playground, I would expect to see my convert functions as code completion when I start to type. And in a normal Xcode project, you would. Playgrounds are a little different from your normal Xcode project in that files and resources in the sources folder will be pre-compiled into a framework which is automatically made available to the demo playground. Now, since it is a framework, in order for my functions to be accessible in the playground, I have to make my functions publicly accessible. So I'll do that and return to my playground. Code completion works now, and I can access my two functions and pass my values in to get the proper conversions. Now it could be in the future that I might be writing an app that has many different conversion functions, and simple code completion might not cut it as my naming conventions for my functions might not all start with convert. What I often do is create a utility class, as I did in the first video in this series, and use the static function approach as a form of namespacing. So let's first copy our two global functions, and then go to this file and create a class, or a struct, or an enum, and I'll call it conversions, and I'll paste those two functions into this class. Again, because we're in a framework, the functions have to be public, but we also need to make our function static so that we don't have to create an instance of the class, just as we did in the first video in this series. And also, we have to make the class public because we're in a framework. Normally, in your own projects, when you're not in a playground, there is no need to make the class or functions public, as they will be public by default. Returning now to our playground, when I type conversions and type the period, I get my two static functions from which I can choose. Let me create both, and I see I get the same results. Utility class files are very useful, and when you have them, you can copy them and use them in multiple projects. The final thing I want to talk to you about in this section is about the possibility of using a type extension. Since both of these functions accept an int and return an int, it leads us to the possibility of just creating an extension on the int type itself. So let's go to this type extension file and create an extension for int. This time I'm going to create two computed properties that are going to return another int based on the current value. So to be descriptive, I'm just going to choose var to Celsius int and var to Fahrenheit int. The return values of the computed properties will just be my two functions, so I can copy and paste them like this. Of course, there is no C or F, but what those values represent are the integer itself, so we can replace them with the word self. 
And of course, because we are in the sources folder of a playground, we have to make the extension public so our demo playground will have access to it. Now returning to the demo file, we should have access to these properties. So if I start with my Celsius integer and type dot, I can pick to Fahrenheit and make the completion. Similarly, if I type the Fahrenheit integer, I can add dot to Celsius. And as you see, we have identical conversions. I sometimes have a preference for utility classes over extensions. In this case, I'd likely choose the extension. In the next example, I'll show you both, but prefer the utility class option because of the namespacing code completion feature. If you want to see another example, just keep watching. In this example, I'm going to use a UI kit example where the view controller has buttons on it. When I tap the first button, I get an alert that is simply a confirmation that something's happened, and I can tap on OK to dismiss. In the second example, the alert gives me three options, and each one has a different action associated with it, simply in this case a print statement. In my code you can see the boilerplate code that we use often, and you should be familiar with that. In the first case, I create an instance of a UI alert controller, give it a title and message, followed by the button action that will do nothing but dismiss the controller. I have then to add the action to the alert controller and then present it on top of the current view controller. For the second alert, I first create the three actions and then repeat the same process as before by creating an instance of the UI alert controller and then add the actions to the instance and then present it. Now if you're like me, you will have used these two kinds of alerts frequently in your projects and that is a lot of code to write each time. Wouldn't it be nice if we could create some reusable functions that would do the repetitive tasks for me? I'm going to share with you two different approaches that I've used. One way to approach this is to create a utility class, and some people like to call it a service, so I'm going to create a new file called alert service. First, I need to change this to import UI kit. And now I can create a class or a struct called alert service, and I'm going to create two static functions. The confirm alert is pretty straightforward. It needs to know on which view controller it will be presented, what the title is, and what the message is going to be. So let's create this static confirm alert function that accepts those parameters in the function. We can go back to our view controller and copy the alert and paste it back into the function. I can change the title and message components to be the values received by the function, and then use the view controller that was passed in to present the alert. And while we're here, let's create the second function. It will be very similar to the first one, but with an additional parameter, which will be the array of UI alert actions. So our static function signature looks like this. So let's create an instance of a UI alert controller using the title and message. And we can loop through the actions provided, adding each one to the alert controller instance. Then finally present the alert on the provided view controller. Back in our view controller, we can comment out the four lines that we use to present our confirmation alert and replace it with a single one. We can start with alert service, and when we type the period, you see both options. We'll pick the first one and pass in self as the view controller, because that's where it's going to be presented on, and then we'll type in the title and message that will be used for this particular alert. Similarly, in the second alert, we need to keep the alert actions in the view controller, but we can pass them into our function along with the view controller, title, and message. This time we're replacing five lines with one, and I don't have to remember the syntax. My function does that. Let's test. Yes, both alerts function as expected. As I mentioned at the outset of this section, I prefer the utility or service class primarily because all I have to do is type in the class name, 
followed by the period, and I see both of the static functions that are part of that class. However, as these functions present another controller on top of the current view controller, it does lend itself to a UI view controller extension. So let's create another file called view controller plus extension. And inside, change this to import UI kit and start an extension on UI view controller. I'm just going to copy the two functions from my service and paste them into the extension. These are not static functions, so I'll remove the static keyword. Also, we do not need to pass in the view controller because we are extending the current one and it knows what it is. Now that we have removed VC as our view controller reference, we can replace it with self. So back in our view controller, let's comment out our two service calls and replace them with the equivalent extensions. Since we are operating on a UI view controller, as I type confirm alert, I get code completion that I can fill in. Similarly for the action alert, I can just start typing present action alert and pass in the title, message, and array of actions. You can decide what you would like to do, either a utility or service class or an extension on the UI view controller. Separating repeated operations into separate and reusable code is a good thing. One of the reasons is if you want to make modifications, you're only making those modifications in one place. For example, I often like to change the tint color of my alert buttons. So if I do that, I will do that in my extension. And now both of my alert buttons will take on the same appearance. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who have left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my YouTube channel to see what other videos I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store. And check out my GitHub repository to see what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.